Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior character artist. In this quick little tips and tricks tutorials, we're going to take a look at custom views. It's something that isn't used a lot in, in ZBrush, I find, but it's one of those things that's, I think, a little underrated, and it actually comes in pretty handy. It's located underneath document. It's this Zaplink properties, okay? Now, if you want, what we can do is we can actually go ahead and we're going to close this material palette and we're going to open our document and we're going to post it over to this one side here. Just want to make sure we had nothing on the other side. This way I've got everything showing at the same time. We have our different zap link uh, properties right here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take off the tool. We don't really need that right now. All right, so basically what a Zaplink does, it used to be that Zaplink could be used to take uh, screenshots and you could uh, fix texture mistakes in Photoshop, etc. And I've, I've worked with that before, but what I generally use it for nowadays is what probably most people use it for, which is taking custom shots of your model, uh, front and back, left, right, and then a couple of custom views. Now I'm using an older version of um, ZBrush because again, not everybody has the newest version. And I think in one of the newer versions, you actually have a number of different custom shots you can take, but at least for this one, it's just two custom shots. But it's, again, it'll be the same idea. You can, what you're gonna learn from here, you're gonna learn, you can use in all, any of the other applications. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and use this uh, characterized basketball player. It's a simple one, but it's really good to do a character sheet for. The first thing you have to do is decide, let's assume for a character sheet, we want the full body, the full body, okay? So this is really simple. What you do is you click on this front. That means it takes a front and back snapshot of your model. I'm gonna now rotate my model. I'm gonna hold down my shift and snap it, and that gives me my side view. I'm gonna call that, say, right. And then I'm going to angle the model just a little bit. Let's get it. So it's got a bit of a three-quarter view. We're gonna call that custom one. And then we're gonna angle it again, and we're gonna call this custom two, okay? So I can, at any time, I can now click front and look at my front view, see what my back view is gonna be, what does right look like, what does left look like, how's my custom view, and how's my other one? Perfect, all right? So let's go ahead and make a character sheet. I click that button, it takes the shots, boom right into Photoshop. I can now zoom in, and you can see the resolution is really nice. Now, I, d I don't necessarily need all this space in between the models, but the point is, is it gives the models right off the bat, which is what I love. And it's on two different backgrounds. You have your, your base background, which is the ZBrush viewport, and then you actually have your strip. So everything's actually separated out on, into a secondary layer for you. So it makes it very easy to select these models and move them. But it's like, boom, that's, that's how you make a character strip that quickly, okay? So it really comes in handy. The nice thing is, is you're not stuck doing just uh, the full body ones. We, we'll do some front ones. By the way, if we wanna save these views, you literally just have to click the save views and you can save this out. You can call it, you know, whatever you want, uh, basketball four, that's fine. We'll just go ahead and save that. We'll load it up in a minute. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear all our views, and we'll, we'll go ahead and clear them. All right, so let's zoom in towards the face. Let's see what we can do with that, all right? So here we are with the face. Let's get in. Again, it's just a character caricature of a basketball player. Let's go ahead and do a front, and we'll do a right. Let's do a nice custom shot, just from a nice angle. We'll do custom one. And let's do one that's like up a little bit closer. There we go, a little more thoughtful. Custom two. Okay, so what does my front look like? How about my back? Again, I'm just clicking these buttons. This is showing you what your views are. Custom one, custom two. Great, let's go ahead and do a custom sh uh, cut character sheet on that one. And there you are. I'm just gonna zoom in. There you go. Great, easy tool. Great views of the model. Whatever whatever materials you have on the model, whatever shading, whatever lighting you wanna put into it, that's what's going to come out. 
That's what I love about it. Oh, but you know what? Uh, we we, we want to go ahead and save this view too, and we'll call this uh, BB2 or 2. But let's go ahead and load up our other one. Well, we had this basketball player 4, right? So what did the front look like? Oh, that's right. And the back, left, right, custom 1, custom 2. So you can save all of your views and if you save out the close-ups, you save the, the faraway shots, you can turn on mix and match and make a multiple uh, multiple kinds of character sheets for yourself. The really great thing is too, let's go ahead and load up our views. We'll go BB2. Let's go ahead and go to our custom one. The nice thing is, is I can go to our model. Let's go to tool. We're gonna have the model showing up. Let's go to our sub tool. I'm going to click this little paintbrush icon. That's what the model looks like without any paint on it. Okay. Let's go back down. Let's scroll down. Make sure we're on our custom one. And the nice thing is, is if you need to do multiple renders and render passes, and you want to get different lighting and different materials on this, you can now with that the color off of it, you can now select your material color, and do a BPR and then render that out and then you can turn around and change this to say like a back for some some shine you can do it with uh, let's see like this this black iron one you can maybe get some nice highlights in there uh, for clothing you might turn around and use something that's a little flatter so so that's uh, the cloth is different and you can then turn around and blend all of those in Photoshop as you need to See, this would be nice for a little bit of rim light without even having to add any lights, just using the default lights. You can get a lot of effect out of this merely by changing your materials and then having these different custom views in the zap link. Okay, so it makes it really easy, really simple, and it's a really handy tool and one that is often overlooked and shouldn't be because it, it actually makes things a whole lot easier for you. Anyway, I hope you had fun with this. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3dmotive.com.